other materials, like wood, if it's like a picket link design, like a picket we, fence, we, but it has to be well. We did away with wood. I think we did away with all that. Yeah. We'll check the ordinance. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure that we went with ornamental iron or aluminum. Okay, that's great. I mean, that would be great. That would be ideal. Um, but we have to absolutely make sure that that's clear with the Board of Architectural Review. But I'd like to put that. If you're going 30000 which you're asking for, well, why aren't it's very, very expensive. I mean, you try to do that. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, we're having to know. We use all of that. I mean, for, well, we do probably three or four houses. But, you know, no, we, I mean, you're not paying 100%. You're doing a percentage, a match, you know, a fourth or a half. We're going to do a 50-50 match. So we wouldn't, you know, we're not going to pay for, we're not going to say, oh, you know, here's ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 to go replace your fence. You know, we're offering this as a grant to help the homeowner hopefully get them to um, to want to do it themselves and, and put up some money as well. That's that's the goal. Yeah, I thought last month Michael said that he wanted to use the money's left, the $4,600, mm -hmm. that he wanted to use it on the museum. So is the museum project finished now? Yeah, and, and, and they, and they you're saying they still have the 46 tenant lot? That's correct. Okay, okay. That's correct. I just want to make you sure. You wouldn't have um, quite as many people um, take advantage of that grant as we would have liked. You know, absentee landlords, whatever. You know, some people just don't. We made the effort. I know Michael worked very hard to let everyone know that that grant money was available numerous times. Now, I was just it's concerned that we, we finished the first project, the museum project. We did. Okay. We that's, did. We have this left, and we'd like to make good use of it. And, right. you know, um, as this, we absorbed the Civic Club, we had discussed doing, um, you know, holiday decorations. Um, you know, we had the Stick Wars competition that Leslie um, spearheaded. You know, we're trying to always keep those storefronts full so that they look nice. And uh, so that the place doesn't look abandoned or, or empty. But, um, you know, until, until a business moves in there and fills that space up, we're trying to do our best to keep it looking okay. nice. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully everyone had a chance to review the minutes for the January 7th Dayton City Council meeting. If there are no changes, and you need a motion to accept the minutes. So moved. No second. second. Motion has been made. Second, any other comments? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Next, we have a second reading of 2014 number one is regarding the flood damage prevention. City of Dayton, Kentucky, 2014 number one. An ordinance amending the Dayton Code of Ordinances, Chapter 152, regarding flood damage prevention. This ordinance amends various portions of the Date Code of Ordinances, Chapter 152, which sets forth building restrictions within the federal flood hazard zones and them into compliance with federal law. This ordinance requires that uses to floods be protected against flood damage at the time of initial construction. It substantially amends definitions of terms in 152.05, makes minor changes to 152.06, making it applicable to certain portions of the city makes minor amendments to 152.07, stating the basis for establishing a flood hazard area, makes minor amendments to 152.12, disclaiming liability, making substantial amendments to 152.31, specific, specific standards, allowing the lowest level of a building to be one foot above the 100-year flood plan, and amends standards for utilities and for filling requirements in flood prone areas makes minor amendments to 152.32, standards for streams without establishing base flood elevation, makes amendments to 152.34, standards for subdivisions in the flood prone, flood, flood prone areas, eliminating requirements for emergency access streets, make amendments to 152.35, standards for accessory structures in flood prone areas, makes minor amendments to 152.36, standards for critical facilities, makes minor amendments to 152.50, describing the floodplain administrator's duties and responsibilities, makes minor amendments to 152.52, procedures for granting variances, 
and makes minor amendments to 152.98, procedures for including notices of citation and violations. This ordinance amends, amendments apply to all areas of special flood hazards within the jurisdiction of Dayton as identified by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA. And it's the second reading. Okay. In motion to accept the deny. Um, Board is number 214, number one. So moved. Second. Second. That's a motion to approve. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. Call in favor? Aye. It actually needs a roll call. Member Volker? Aye. Member Bress? Aye. Member Allen? Member Gifford? Aye. Member Hurt? Aye. Member Burns? Aye. Next, we have the first reading of 2014, number two, which is abandoning, abandoning a portion of Walnut Street, also identified as Harrison Avenue. City of Dayton, Type 2014, Number 2. An ordinance closing and abandoning a portion of Walnut Street, also identified as Harrison Avenue. This ordinance closes the portion of Walnut Street, also identified as Harrison Avenue, in Dayton, a budding property known as 41 Harrison Avenue. That's just the first reading. Okay. We'll move on to the department head report. Uh, we'll start off with the police department. When Scott gives his report, he can introduce us to um, a resolution, possibly for the SWAT team. Um, the, the report I gave you tonight, the, there's actually three pages. The half page is the report from uh, January, but the following two pages, I just I wanted to let you see the totals we had for the entire year of uh, 2013. Um, if anyone has any questions about either one of those. Again, the top page is for this year, January, and the, the following two pages are for the year of, the total numbers for the year of 2014. Notice the, um, the business checks really, really gone, gone up considerably. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's no question about that. Um, back, in, <clears throat> back in October, um, I started to research uh, an issue that is very important in law enforcement. It's not an issue that people really like to think about a whole lot, but uh, the issue of uh, special operations or SWAT. Um, I sp uh, prior to me coming to Dayton, I spent uh, 12 years assigned to a SWAT team and I held four of the five positions that you can hold on a SWAT team. Um, the reason for my, my endeavor into checking into this is um, it's an issue I think we as a city need to be prepared for. Uh, you don't like to think of that issue ever coming about. Uh, just in the month of December, uh, there were two, two of the Northern Kentucky counties had SWAT uh, activations within two weeks of each other. Mm -hmm. um, Last month, every, it was in the media, everyone heard about the uh, SWAT activation in the city of Covington that lasted 20 hours. Um, I have done extensive research based on my experience um, viewing some of the teams within the area, and uh, the ordinance tonight, uh, if you choose to pass, it would be that we uh, go with the, uh, the Kent County SWAT team, which is a multi-jurisdictional team. And what I mean by that is there are two active Camden County Police Departments that are a part of that team. Um, they have a, uh, a large amount of resources. They have a, a large manpower uh, in relation to uh, you would compare to different SWAT teams. And their standards are very high. They follow national standards and they follow uh, state standards as well. Why would we go with Newport? <clears throat> um, I Head of this new board has some excellent tactical officers. I know many of them. I've competed in competitions with many of them. Um, there was a originally the, there was an original Campbell County unit. Uh, that Campbell County unit dissolved last year. Um, Newport went with their own team. Um, I feel in the city's best interest, being that they are they are newly formed or newly reformed that we go with a team that's been in existence for, for quite some time and has a, a, may have a few higher resources and a uh, little greater manpower. I have a question. I, I, at the Holy Cross game, I was talking to an officer, and he brought it up to me. Mm -hmm. And he said, you would be 
probably sending one of your guys over here once in a while to help us. Is that true or not? Um, to help when needed for using their SWAT team, which I don't understand because if there is a Campbell County, I, we have to pay, are we going to have to pay to use Kenton County when we pay taxes to our county? Yes. To do well, something they, for us? They do have a fee. <clears throat> They do have a fee, but what you don't want to get into, and I was actually a part of this years ago, was if you if you don't come under, whether you call it an agreement, um, a contract, however you want to put it, and you call for a team to come assist you with a problem within your city, what you find is you get a large bill from that city for their manpowers, their equipment, and anything else that they have spent time helping you with your problem. Um, by doing this, we would, we would, yes, there is, there is a fee involved. Um, I've gone to the board. Uh, the Kent County team is run by a board because it is multi-jurisdictional. I've gone to them and I've requested if the city would choose to go with this team, uh, could we be not pay the total amount until the next fiscal year starts, and they did agree to do that. What's going to make them want to respond to our city quicker than their area? That's one of the other questions. They, they are under a requirement of when they are to respond. There's a certain amount of time, and pretty much most SWAT teams have that, that you have to respond within X amount of time. Um, a lot of teams, uh, not just in Kentucky, but a lot of teams in some parts nationally, they are limited manpower-wise, and that's why manpower is so important. The Kenton County team has enough men that they can split it into two teams, where there is a team always on call. So you don't have to worry about, you know, is, is certain members on vacation, is somebody sick, is somebody in training. They have enough manpower-wise that they will. They have two teams, and they will always have the, one of those teams on call. Didn't you situation. just say they had 20 hours involved in this a week or so ago? Uh, yes, SWAT. Covington, Covington SWAT, uh, it was a 20-hour standoff. Okay. And they brought in... They, they actually had to bring in uh, two other teams to assist them. Who are the other two cities that... Why, uh, not, why do we have to just be restricted to one county when Newport has the same available situation? Explain that to me. Well, if I, if I understand correctly, he doesn't have as much faith in the Newport team since it just reads starting up as he does in this other team. That's, that's what, I'm, what I'm understanding at this point. They have a lot of good options. What cities in Campbell County are involved with the Kent County? That's uh, Fort Thomas Police Department in Campbell County. Yeah. Police. Okay. And I actually spoke with, I, I, in my research about this, I spoke with Chief Hill, uh, who is the chief of Campbell County Police Department, and I asked him, I said, why did you go with this particular team? And he said his men that are part of the SWAT team actually went and trained with other teams and they came back to him and voted, we want to go with the Kent County team. Okay. Scott, what's the, what's the uh, you said there's going to be a cost. Yes. And you asked the cost to be deferred to next year. What is the cost in, for this group you're, you're speaking of, and what's the cost for Campbell County, and what's the cost for, for if you join Newport? There's going to be three different costs, I, I assume. The cost for the Kenton County team is if, if we started today with them, the annual fee they have is two thousand dollars. That covers if you never use them, if you use them once, if you use them a hundred times. Right. What they agreed to do for us is, if we started tomorrow, we would only pay half, which would be about you know half a year. Mm -hmm. They agreed. The board agreed to do that. Um, I spoke to Newport. I, I couldn't get a straight answer, and I couldn't get an answer that they would not bill us if we did call for them, which you are running a very high risk of a of a bill. I, I could not get a straight answer. Um, but you're saying Kenton County has uh, a SWAT team and they have two Campbell County cities in it. Four times. Four times the Campbell County. And Campbell County has their own SWAT team and Newport has their own SWAT team. There's another There's another Campbell County team that's... Consistent. And there's an Alexander team. That's Alexander, Alexander team. yeah. And, there, and then there's Newport. And then Campbell County went with Kenton County. That's correct. The form of the thing. That's correct. Right. The SWAT team over there. So. I mean, I think it's a no-brainer myself. I mean, well, I, I, I think, think it's a two thousand dollars cost. Well, well, Kenton, the Campbell County Police feel more comfortable working with the Kenton County squad. squad. I you think that says a lot for the caliber. Why did Newport uh, disband theirs? I, I can't speculate on why. I, I mean, I don't. I, 
I know that there was an issue when the original Campbell County team was in existence. There was an issue, whether it was with management, whether it was with supervisors. I, I tried not to get into that issue too much, but it was it was a large enough issue that it caused them to split. Same, same one. One thing about it is you got Kimball County put out in Alexander. You got the Alexanders got a SWAT team. They didn't go with them. They went all the way to Kenton County. That tells me enough that they need to go with yeah. Kenton County. Right. And we had our public safety meeting, and the, the thing that we were concerned with is, you know, um, the, the timing to get the Kenton County group here. But like you said, it's not like a, a SWAT team is on duty at, you know, seven hours a day or whatever. It's you pull in this group of people, mm -hmm. and, and so it's, you don't know what locale they're coming from even, so the turnaround's quick enough as any any town would be. That, you know. and, and that's correct. And, and, and when I, you know, when I was serving on a SWAT team, you know, you, you, the, you know you're on call. I mean, you're, certain teams are on call at certain times, that, and the reason for that is is for the safety of whatever cities you're responding to, you, there's always a team ready waiting if something, if, if the city of Dayton call and say, we need you now, there's a team coming. So what do we actually put, pay taxes to Campbell County? Good question. What services do we get out of it? Good question. Can, anybody, can you find that out, Scott? Because that would be real good. Uh, you mean for the for the police service? Yeah, I mean we don't get anything. Well, I think uh, if, if I remember correctly, I think the Campbell County Police Department, you might remember more nice Scott, but they had a special child abuse investigation mm -hmm. down the yes. street. Mm -hmm. So if there's a, if there's need for an investigation somewhere like that in Dayton, we would call them and have them come and do that. If we ever run short of a police officer for some reason or another, we can ask them to come down and patrol our streets also. But other than that, no. But you said that if if we go along with this uh, with Kenton County, that the fee would be only a thousand dollars this year. That's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, two thousand next year. And two thousand okay. dollars, and, and it's not in the budget. Uh, we've got we got to put the two thousand dollars in the budget for next year. Well, we decided this year we could take a thousand dollars out of this drug money that he can use for that type of thing. <laughs> take your drug money. I mean, I, I would say. I'm going to ask him where he's going to get the thousand dollars at. Yeah, yeah. Then another thing also, I mean, whether you like it or not, we do have drugs in the city of Dayton. We were going to do a drug bust, and we were told that the person that we were going to go after has a lot of guns, and, and quite frankly, it would be nice to be able to call. Not that our police officers are not trained, but given a group of officers that are highly trained that can go in there and take care of this type of situation without some of our guys getting hurt or getting shot at or, I mean, I would rather have an officer that is trained constantly to that type of situation than just to have the, I don't want to say the normal police officer, but I mean, I want somebody that right. knows what's going okay. on. So. Do you need a motion? I think we need a motion. Oh, yeah, we need a resolution. Okay. That's a resolution. Thanks. Tokyo Gate, Kentucky, 2014 3R. An order authorizing the city to enter into an interlocal agreement with the Kent County Sheriff, Cities of Edgewood, Ellesmere, Fort Mitchell, Fort Wright, Independence, Ludlow, Taylor Mill, Villa Hills, the police authority for the cities of Lake Side Park, Crestview Hills, Fort Thomas, and the Campbell County Police Department for participation in the Kenton County Special Weapons and Tactics, the SWAT Force. Be it ordered by the City of Dayton, Campbell County, Kentucky, Section 1, that the City of Dayton is hereby authorized to enter into an interlocal agreement with the Kenton County Sheriff, Cities of Edgewood, Ellesmere, Fort Mitchell, Fort Wright, Independence, Ludlow, Taylor Mill, Villa Hills, the police authorities for the cities of Lakeside Park and Crestview Hills, the city of Fort Thomas, and the Campbell County Police Department for participation in the Kent County Special Weapons and Tactics, the SWAT Force. A copy of the agreement is attached here too and made part hereof by reference. Section 2, the mayor and any other necessary official is authorized to sign all documents necessary to effect the above provision. Section 3, the shoulder shall be signed by the mayor, attested by the city clerk recorded, and shall be in effect at the earliest time provided by law. I make a motion we adopt order 2014-3R. Okay. I'll second. Motion made. Second. Can we have a uh, roll call, please? <laughs> Member Bruschi? Yes. Member Allen? Member Gifford? Aye. Member Hurd? Aye. Member Burns? Aye. Member Holder? Aye. Stephen Castle? 
I just want to share a couple things with you um, from January. Um, we did receive grant money for uh, the replacement of headsets, head units that were placed in apparatus. Uh, they were aging, uh, some are 12 to 20 years old. So uh, and these headsets are designed to protect the uh, employee's hearing, <laughs> hearing for hearing protection. And also that they can be transmitted from the cab of the, of the apparatus to dispatch and they can talk, talk to talk to each other in a cab. So we were really happy to get that money. Also in January uh, the 17th and the 21st, um, the firefighters went to Lincoln Elementary and worked with the uh, 4th, 5th, and 6th graders and taught them CPR and first aid. Um, so they were really happy for us to be down there and, and going through that. Um, February 26th, we'll be actually attending a meeting on the Bell of Cincinnati. It's in Newport. And it's actually an area marine security training and exercise program, which uh, should be taking place around August. It's going to be like a mass, a mass rescue operation. All the river agencies will be involved. It'll be an all-day deal. Uh, police will be involved. Coast Guard, of course, our, our boat, Cincinnati, and there's a township, Covington, and Newport will play a big part in it since it'll be in Newport. So we're kind of looking forward to that. And um, well, this past Saturday, the fire department assisted with the 2014 polar plunge at the Joe's Crab Shack. That went, that went really well. Uh, we were able to take our backup medic unit down and put two medics with that unit to uh, stage with water rescue in case of any emergency so we didn't tie up our, our, our squad that makes runs to both cities. Um, the only other thing I attended today, a 90 minute um, overview on a, on a, it's more police -ish, uh, police safe. It's a uh, swift access victim extrication. It's on uh, shootings. Um, Kent and Dunn County are a little bit ahead of us, and uh, EMA Emergency Management is actually working on SOP or Gs for our county. And basically, what we went over was active shooter in a school or in a um, uh, a business. Uh, they did team formation and movements, terminology, uh, medicines that medics would carry in with the with the team once the coast is clear. Uh, we went over patient extrication, how to actually remove patients. Uh, they talked about uh, different school shootings in the past 10 years. Uh, it was taught by a Boone County Sheriff. Um, but it was really well. Uh, Newport Fire Chief really took this and really wants the, the county to move forward with it. Uh, like I said, EMA is, is typing something up. I think they're piggybacking off Boone and Kenton. And it's something that uh, we really need. Uh, we have a lot of schools, four or five in both cities, so it's something that we need to get a game plan on, and I'm real glad that we're going to be involved in this um, and working with Newport and Fort Thomas and really the whole county and police because, you know, we really don't know their terminology. They don't know our terminology. Um, so I'm kind of excited also to work with the uh, with all the schools. One thing I'll just point out, and then I'll, uh, I'll sit down. But um, <coughs> one thing they did in Boone County is they, in every school, they look at a building as firefighters look at a building. We look at a building in front would be A's. And you have B, C, and D. And what they've done, Boone County on all the windows is put A and the, and the room number on every window. So when units respond, um, when they're talking on radio, be it night or day, they can look up and see exactly where, where people are at. So that, that was really neat. And I know Lincoln and he had numbers at one time. Mm -hmm. It really helped. <coughs> Any questions on the rest of my report? I just want to touch on some of those things. And um, I know that you. Hopefully we've handled the issue with the squad billing, but have you heard from any other residents that have issues with Fort Thomas squad no, I, billing? No, I have not. And actually, our, in the last two months, our squad billing has actually went up. So I think we've we've found that gap and, and closed it, okay. and it's well, working not, out. Uh, my suggestion would be we did call Fort Thomas, and they said they soft bill. Um, so I, I think their billing agency doesn't know that. Yeah. So I would probably yeah. contact them. Well, I did, but okay. they still insist I have to pay it. <laughs> so what's the, what's the problem? Fort Thomas, uh, the billing service mm -hmm. that Fort Thomas uses for their squad billing is insisting that Fort Thomas does not have soft billing agreement with Dayton, and Dayton residents have to pay the full squad bill. No. Good. So when we go out to Fort Thomas, do so we do soft billing? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So how are we accommodating that? Yeah, do you I mean, soft bill for We, we soft bill everybody. No. Yes. 
Yeah, I noticed four times you called Bill. I called four times. I received a call from right. the last month, and I called, and they told me that they saw Bill. Right, but their right. agency <coughs> doesn't know that. It's a problem. So I'm just waiting. So you see, I told them three times, so I'll wait to see if I get another one. I've been getting you another month. Three, and then they quit sending them. I've been getting them September, October, November. December, January. I've gotten five months now. Did you call for it up there? I called the billing company, mm -hmm. and they told me there's no agreement. Okay. I can call four times tomorrow. Okay. And then if you would like to call the fire station tomorrow. I also had uh, Lieutenant Schaefer, he's in, in, with, in with inspections, actually check on that smoking around propane. He just got back with me in the state of Kentucky. There's no law against smoking a cigarette next to a propane tank. So. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. So, uh, to, to back up on that, anybody get to bill? They got had a run by Fort Thomas. I mean, Fort Thomas and or Newport even. She you Newport get a bill, you don't pay it. Do not pay yeah. it. You're paying taxes. Hey, she puts so, Newport do if they if they make a squad run here, do they bill us? It should. They, it's a salt bill. It's a salt bill for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, you know, we're uh, we're tied into with the mutual aid system. Mm-hmm. Uh, it came with the county. We all agree to solve bill. Your case is the only one. And I said at the last meeting that I'd update the handicap bar team. Um, everybody responded. Still, most people still need their uh, their parking space. We had 51 residents with handicap parking spaces in 2013, and so now we have 54 residents with handicap parking spaces. But that's all been approved and updated. You may report problems. Yeah. Do you know if they reports of finance over roughly? I need to make that, and we have uh, a service that's going to go over there, is what I understand. So we have with uh, Hamilton County IT team to take care of our servers and to upgrade our servers to $21,592.44. I need to make a Second. Yeah, but we didn't just discuss it with them. We discussed it with the um, APICA group. Is that what it was? The other APICA. Yeah. yeah. And um, com compared. And the reason why we didn't go with the APICA was simply because the cost was higher, but it had it had its better points, I think. But aside from that. Um, we thought we'd try this for what another three years and just see how it goes. Yeah, investigate it later. Before right? we um, go more high tech at this point. Okay. Okay. Given the cost, this isn't something we had to uh, bid out, is it? No. Yeah. Well, it is. It's a, it's it's a, it's a, and also, the servers are getting to the point where we're going to have to do something. To well, do I, I realize that, but. I mean, we're purchasing the equipment and we're hiring throughout through the county okay. to do the, the service. It's not like. I think we're okay with check on it. Okay. Also, like to thank Ben for his input on exactly. this. Exactly. Yes. Very helpful. So thank you. Um, Motion has been made and second. Is there any other comments? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any nays? Mm -hmm. Anybody else? No. Uh, public safety, do we vote um, I don't have anything at this point, but based on some of the discussions we've had tonight, can we schedule a meeting and talk a few things? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever brought up the Black Watch program again? Oh, Are gosh. we uncomfortable with that? I, I've not heard the word Black Watch in quite some time. I don't know. You have you have the group that you started with the community members for the school. Mm -hmm. What's the academy you call it or something? Uh, we, well, it was kind of, in, I guess, two phases. You had the, the DIPS, which is the volunteers and police services, which basically assist us with, you know, any things we may need at events or so forth. But that was the existing group. Um, they were involved in the formulating of a Citizens Academy. Black Watch was not necessarily a large active part of it. It was a, a small active part, but not what you would consider like a national Black Watch program that you see in many other well, I don't. What I'm getting at is, we used to have a program and there were signs that people would put in their house.